Okay, let's see what's gonna get it this time. Uh, let's see what I wrote here. What? Quantum physics? Hang on, let's see. Yes, quantum physics! You know, the science that tells us that the physical world is made of information, which exists in an infinite consciousness. Oh, that kind of quantum physics, yeah. Yes, it tells us that everything is possible. You can teleport to anywhere in the universe, conjure anything you want out of thin air, cure any disease with a mere thought. Everything is possible if you believe it is, because reality is created by the observer. This is what's known as the observer effect. And no, it's not magic. It is not woo-woo. It is quantum physics. It's science. Who the hell are you, Deepak Chopra? No, 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 I am Dr. Durpak. I don't know who you're talking about, but let's not talk about him anymore, because I think he sues people who criticize him. But I wouldn't know, because I don't know who you're talking about. Anyway, let's, let's talk about some quantum uh, physics instead, because that is really fascinating stuff, especially the recent discovery of the Higgs boson. Did you know that the Higgs boson was so hard to find because it keeps jumping in and out of the infinite void? Yes, it does the cosmic hokey pokey, you know. It goes in, and then it goes out, and then it goes in, and then it goes out, and it, and, it, and then it shakes all about. It's sort of, that's what we call a quantum fluctuation. <laughs> this particle is a virtual force field of infinite possibilities. It is proof that mass is information in the infinite mind of the cosmos, the consciousness of God. This discovery totally changes our view of the concept of divinity. <laughs>
the probability of a particle being found in a particular state. I know that sounds pretty weird and it's kind of hard to grasp without a proper understanding of the math behind it. So don't try. Instead, compare it to this little thought experiment. Here's a vector. Call it x. It has a magnitude of 1 and it points in the x direction. Since there's no other direction here, we can mathematically describe it as 1, plain and simple. Now let's add a y direction, perpendicular to x. The x and y vectors give us a plane, or if you want to think of it as a square, I suppose that's fine. Calling x 1 doesn't really work anymore now, because we have to keep the direction in mind. x is 1 in the x direction and 0 in the y direction, so we call it 1, 0, and y is 0, 1. Adding a third direction, z, makes things a bit harder to visualize. Mathematically, though, it's a simple matter of adding an extra coordinate. x is now 1, 0, 0, y is 0, 1, 0, and z is 0, 0, 1. Now try to add a fourth dimension. Add a vector perpendicular to x, y, and z. Just as z is the vector pointing straight out of the xy plane, turning the square into a cube, this fourth vector would be the vector pointing straight out of the space xyz, turning the cube into a shape called a hypercube, which is one of those impossible shapes that will make your brain hurt if you try to analyze it. Yeah, I, I said that. Add a vector pointing straight out of a space. I want you to actually try to point in that direction. Go ahead, try it. Can't do it, can you? In fact, I'm pretty sure most of you think it's impossible for such a direction to exist. It simply makes no sense. But mathematically, this direction is easy to describe. Just add a fourth coordinate, which is zero for x, y, and z, and add a fourth vector, let's call it t, and set it to zero, 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 one. Adding a fifth dimension is just as easy. In fact, we can keep adding dimensions all day. The point of this exercise is to demonstrate the limits of the human ability to visualize things, and to show how mathematics works just fine, even when it deals with things we can't visualize. Just as we can't visualize a fourth spatial dimension, we can't visualize the true nature of an energy quantum, or any other quantum scale particle for that matter. But we can still use math to describe it. This is the first misconception I want to address. Particles are not mathematical constructs. They're not pure information. That would be ridiculous. Particles are actual physical phenomena, not abstract concepts. We simply use mathematical constructs to describe them. We really don't have a choice. The quantum world is simply too far removed from the reality we perceive through our senses. That leads to another misconception. They say that if we can't understand something intuitively, then we can't know anything about it. And that means quantum physics proves that we know nothing about the natural world because if we can't understand the nature of its smallest constituents, then we can't understand that which they make up either. There are two problems with this. The first is that while it may not be possible to actually visualize what's going on at the quantum scale, the scientific method still works just fine. We use mathematical models to make testable predictions, and when we find that a model consistently provides accurate predictions, we conclude that it works, until we find out otherwise. When that happens, the model is modified to take the new results into account, test it again, and so on and so on. So yes, we can, and we do know a lot about the subatomic world, with the same degree of certainty that we know things about anything else. The second problem is that even if we knew nothing about the subatomic world, we would still have a very good understanding of the macroscopic world, because that's very easy to study. This is probably the single most important thing to keep in mind when trying to distinguish between real quantum physics and quantum physics abuse, and I'll be expanding on it next time. See you then.